Something called the Danish Twin Study established that only about 10% of how long the average person lives within certain biological limits is dictated by our genes. The other 90% is dictated by our lifestyle. So the premise of Blue Zone is if we can find the optimal lifestyle of longevity, we can come up with a de facto formula for longevity. But if you ask the average American what the optimal formula of longevity is, they probably couldn't tell you. We think uh, the best way to get these missing years is to look at the cultures around the world that are actually experiencing them. Areas where people are living to age 100 at rates up to 10 times greater than we are. Areas where the life expectancy is an extra dozen years and the rate of middle age mortality is a fraction of what it is in this country. We found our first blue zone about 125 miles off the coast of Italy on the island of Sardinia and not the entire island, the island's about 1.4 million people, but only up in the highlands, an area called the Noral province. And here we have this area where men live the longest, about 10 times more centenarians than we have here in America. And this is a place where people not only reach age 100, they do so with extraordinary vigor. Places where 102 year olds still ride their bike to work, chop wood, and can <laughs> beat a guy 60 years younger than them. <laughs> Because the land is so infertile, they're largely uh, shepherds, which occasions regular low-intensity physical activity. Their diet is mostly plant-based, accentuated with foods that they can carry into the fields. But the real secret, I think, lies more in the way that they organize their society. And one of the most salient elements of the Sardinian society is how they treat older people. You ever notice here in America, social equity seems to peak at about age 24? You know, just look at the advertisements. Uh, here in Sardinia, the older you get, the more equity you have, the more wisdom you're celebrated. We found our second blue zone on the other side of the planet, about 800 miles south of Tokyo on the uh, archipelago of Okinawa. Okinawa is actually 161 small islands. And in the northern part of the main island, uh, this is ground zero for world longevity. Uh, this is a place where the oldest living female population is found. It's a place where people have the longest disability-free life expectancy in the world. They have what we want. What do they do? Once again, a plant-based diet full of vegetables with lots of color in them, and they eat about eight times as much tofu as Americans do. More significant than what they eat is how they eat it. They have all kinds of little strategies to keep from overeating which, as you know, is a big problem here in America. A few of the strategies we observe, they eat off of smaller plates. So they tend to eat fewer calories at every city. Instead of serving family style, where you can sort of mindlessly eat as you're talking, they serve at the counter, put the food away, and then bring it to the table. But like Sardinia, Okinawa has a few social constructs that we can associate with longevity. We know that isolation kills. Fifteen years ago, the average American had three good friends. We're down to one and a half right now. If you were lucky enough to be born in Okinawa, you were born into a system where you automatically have a half a dozen friends with whom you travel through life. This particular Moai, these five ladies have been together for 97 years. Their average age is 102. So, what are the common denominators in these, in these three cultures? What are the things that they all do? And we managed to boil it down to nine. And the first one, and I'm about to utter a heresy here, none of them exercise, at least the way we think of exercise. Instead, they set up their lives so that they're constantly nudged into physical activity. These 100-year-old Okinawan women are getting up and down off the ground. They sit on the floor. 30 or 40 times a day. Uh, the Sardinians live in vertical houses, up and down the stairs. Every trip to the store or to church or to the friend's house occasions a walk. They don't have any conveniences. There's not a button to push to do yard work or housework. If they want to mix up a cake, they're doing it by hand. That's physical activity. That burns calories just as much as going on the treadmill does. When they do do intentional physical activity, it's things they enjoy. They tend to walk the only proven way to stave off cognitive decline, 
and they all tend to have a garden. They know how to set up their life in the right way so they have the right outlook. Each of these cultures take time to downshift. They have vocabulary for sense of purpose. Ikigai, like the Okinawans. You know, the two most dangerous years in your life are the year you're born because of infant mortality and the year you retire. These people know their sense of purpose and they activate it in their life. That's worth about seven years of extra life expectancy. There's no longevity diet. Instead, these people drink a little bit every day, not a hard sell to the American population. <laughs> they tend to eat a plant-based diet. Doesn't mean they don't eat meat, but lots of beans and nuts. And they have strategies to keep from overeating. And then the foundation of all this is how they connect. They put their families first, take care of their children and their aging parents. Uh, they all tend to belong to a faith-based community, which is worth between four and 14 extra years of life expectancy if you do it four times a month. And the biggest thing here is they also belong to the right tribe. We know from the Framingham studies that if your three best friends are obese, there's a 50% better chance that you'll be overweight. Diets don't work. No diet in the history of the world has ever worked for more than 2% of the population. Exercise programs usually start in January. They're usually done by October. When it comes to longevity, there is no short-term fix in a pill or anything else. But when you think about, about it, your friends are long-term adventures and therefore perhaps the most significant thing you can do to add more years to your life and life to your years. Thank you very much.